A baby sailfish is my next fish. Time to get started on a sailfish. I'd love to make this thing three piece. Since pine isn't a very strong wood, it actually breaks pretty easily. I'm going to use a piece of oak, cut it out and glue it in like so. All right, I've got this cutted fit in here, this piece of oak. Took it back a little further so it's a nice snug fit. I'm gonna put some glue in there. Put that set up, then we'll get to carving. Sailfish are pretty skinny. Um, I left this pretty boxy. I have to drill in the lead cavities and I also have to draw in the gill work and all that. I'm gonna round out the sides. All right, got a piece of aluminum here and it's time to figure out this top dorsal, the sail. The, what makes a sailfish a sailfish? I need to clean these up. Make this fin come to life. Here we go. All right. Got that down. Nice and detailed. Looking good, looking good. It probably will catch the line. I'm really not worried about that. I really don't care how it, what the repercussions could be. If I lose it, I lose it. I'll make another one. Uh, yeah. It's time to put the, the rays in the fin. I'm gonna use a smaller cutoff wheel. And I'm just going to Go ahead and score it while holding it with pliers because it's going to heat up right on the edge of the table. All right, that top dorsal, the sail done. Looks really good. Kicker fin. That'll be the side fin. I decided to go ahead and make these little back fins. Definitely gonna look good once I get them in there. All right, I need about a quarter inch cut down into this tail so I can glue and insert this uh, tail section. So Okay, I've got the sailfish in the vice grips pinched between two large mixing sticks because I do not want to mark up the sides of this. Then I'm going to use an X-Acto blade and try and 
cut a nice clean slot in the top of this bait. It looks like a sailfish. There's a few things I need to do to it still. So I know I'm gonna cut it here, and I know I'm gonna cut it here. Sand her head in the drill. Gonna concave this out. I'm going to drill a hole and screw an eye screw in this back section. So I'm just poking a hole with the nail. And then I'll use some super glue on this one inch eye screw. I'll be using a little eater bit. That should give it a good little tail action. I'm going to do the same thing. With this midsection going into the head, except I'm going to be using two eye screws. Right here and right here, where I'm going to make those pockets. All right, now I got to connect the body together. So I've got to drill a hole through the bottom. And I'm going to come out the top, but when I go to glue this in, because the fin is going to be in the way. I'm gonna try and angle it so it comes out a little to the side. All right, got, got it all sectioned. Cut all the fins in. Well, except for that back one. I'm gonna put a hole in the tail, put a pin through it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start super gluing all these fins in. I'm actually going to go ahead and drill the lead cavity in this now. Get that done. I'm going to do two, two holes. I'm going to go with uh, two 3 8 inch holes using the Forstner bit. Going backwards to score the wood before I go forwards. That way I don't rip it apart. While I'm here, might as well uh, pour the lead now they got the holes drilled. So I'm gonna pour the lead now. Look at this little, <laughs> I ended up doing a uh, little lead cavity. I'll show you this way. I ended up doing a little lead cavity in this um, midsection too. I need to coat it in some polyurethane first. So it's easier just to brush it on. Nice and easy. All right, I got all my pieces hanging up, I'm drying. I ended up removing that anal fin. I just don't, I want more, a little bit more functionality out of it and while it looked good, I wanted to swim. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these holes now, all these lead pockets with some peanut butter. I'm gonna mix up fiberglass peanut butter using polyester resin and micro spears. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. And then this is the Hardener. This is a uh, mech P. Literally gonna use like two drops of this stuff. And when I say two drops, I mean two drops to get this to harden. So I'm gonna mix in some fumed silica. Got a stir stick, about like that. Just dump it in there. They call it peanut butter because you just want the consistency of peanut butter. 
to go ahead and sand this off the Dremel, smooth it out, so I'm 200 and then 400 grit. All right, got that smoothed out. Now I'm just gonna do a little fine tuning. All right, this is what I got. Kind of hard to see in the light, but not too shabby. Okay, so I couldn't find a drill bit that was long enough, so I used a piece of wire and a torch, heated that wire up, got a red hot, shoved it in the wood. So I've initially burned a hole about an inch down into this bait, took about five or six burns to do that but finally got down there and i'll be able to screw in my eye screw that's going to go underneath the beak now that i made so here's that eye screw that i made i'm probably going to cut it off about right here and if this goes according to plan it should screw right in okay this step all i'm doing is dripping super glue I'm using a spray-on enamel to clear this, the midsection, while the head dries. I'm going to make sure I... This is going to take multiple coats, so that is the first of many. All right, to put this lure together, I'm going to be using this 18 gauge, I think this is brass. I'm just going to real simply slide the connections together, force that piece of wire through the through the holes. I went kind of far. All right, right there. Then I'm just going to clip that off and super glue. I'll hold that together. Whoops. Cast net. This poor black racer has got its head twisted up in here, so I'm gonna try and get the poor little guy out. I just got a real easy grip on it. I'm probably gonna cut it because uh, I can repair the cast net. I feel bad for the snake. Go ahead and let this snake go. <laughs> Came right at me. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to get you all locked up in that net. All right, well, back to fishing. I'm out here fishing this hole. It's about 20 foot deep. Um, glad he found that black racer hanging out in that cast net before it expired in there would have felt really bad that black racer hangs out eats all the lizards and bugs running around i'm sure what i'm gonna try and do here is drop straight down to the bottom in this hole 
because it's pretty dang hot up at the surface. These fish should be. I haven't been really wanting to feed up at the surface lately. Dang. Maybe I won't get 40 minutes. Maybe I'll only get 15. <laughs> this storm's rolling in fast. But I'm just going to let it sink nice and slow and twitch it and work this bottom. Hopefully pick up a bass suspended down there. It's raining again. Non-stop. Nice bass sitting right there. Aiden on the second. <laughs> he ate it on the second bite. I can't believe. I mean, I was a little sight cast in there. It's a nice bass, too. Oh, nice. Heck yeah. Get back in the water fast. Nice little chunker. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Some days it's just that easy. You walk down, see a big bass, make a little cast to it. Took it on the second swing. That's awesome. So bass eat sailfish, you know. Uh, sailfish works pretty good, kind of like a fluke or a trick worm. So you just cast it out and I've been twitching it. Uh, I had one other bass, little or one, hit it. But it's got great action. Just, you know, we're not working like a swim bait, but just working it, you know, kind of twitching, like I said, a trick worm or a fluke. Uh, hoping to get out, hit the flats, out maybe Tampa Bay or a little bit north of there, and catch um, saltwater species. If I can get north, north of Red Tide, you know, up in Homa Sassa, Crystal River area, I could probably do a lot better. But I appreciate y'all. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't, or if you don't want to, then don't. Catch you on the next one.